If you're told here's a triangle and you want to find the unknown, okay, how would we do it in this case? Well, I'm going to advise you draw the diagram for yourself and then if you've got two colours that are different to the ones you used, that'll be really useful. You'll see why in a second. Okay. The sign rule, each version of it, requires four pieces, right? There's the piece you want to find, in this case it's a lake, and then there's three other things. Opposite angle, and then another side with its opposite angle. Okay. So the first thing you look at is, what's the one you want? There it is. So which angle does it match up to? It's the obtuse angle in this case, right? So I'm going to use one colour to identify its opposite angle. Then you need another side with its opposite angle, right? So the other side here is 7, which makes its opposite angle this one in the corner, 45 degrees. And I'm going to use a different colour to indicate that so I don't mix them up, okay? Once you've identified, that's kind of the hardest bit of these straightforward questions. You just got to make sure you don't just randomly choose an angle, you match them up properly. I'm going to use this form of the side rule because... I want to find a side, I want to put the side up here at the top rather than have to put it here and then turn it upside down. I might as well just go straight to here. So I'm going to write x on sine 120. Actually, I told a lie, you probably don't even need your calculator for this. 7 on sine 45, but you got it there, so you might as well use it anyway. All I have to do to make x the subject is to write 7 sine 120 on sine 45. So, yep. So, Arian, you don't often need it, but can you use the sine rule in a right angle triangle? <laughs> you can use the sine rule in a right angle triangle, and I'll show you why in a second once we get the answer to this. Um, because the lovely thing about the sine rule is it'll work in any triangle you conjure, and if one of the angles happens to be 90 degrees, no big deal. It's just one of the angles you can use. Uh, has someone got it evaluated? Can we get this exact, actually? Uh, Do you reckon you could do it exact? Because I think, I think you could. 7 sine 120. Sine 120 is the same as sine 60, isn't it? Sine 60 is root 3 on 2. That denominator is sine 45. That's another exact value. That's 1 on root 2. Put that in brackets so I don't confuse my fractions on fractions. Could you do that? Can you work that one out? Yeah, this root 2 on the bottom here, right, because you're dividing by a fraction, that's guy that's going to hop up the top. So I think that would be 7 root 6 on 2. And in fact, that's already rationalised, so I guess you'd leave it there. If you just punch this into your calculator, I'm assuming you get some weird decimal, yeah. go ahead and check. 7 root 6 on 2, does it get the give, give you the same value? Yeah. You happy with it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, what was the decimal you got? Uh, 8.73. 8.73? 8.573. Oh, 8.5. That'll do. Okay. Now, just before we leave, it's important every time you do any kind of question where it's possible to sort of do a sense check, right? Have a look. Does the value make sense? Okay. Now, put your pens down for a moment. I'm going to teach you how, in situations with trigonometry like this, you can actually do what I like to call a bit of a super powered sense check on these. You can do more than say, that's 7, that's 8.57, that I'm in the right ballpark. Okay. You can do better than that. Do you notice, have a look over here. See this 45 degrees, how it's opposite 7, okay? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put out your arms in front of you as if you were these two sides, okay? Now, if, um, if you had one arm in front of you and one arm directly to the side, that's 90 degrees, right? So now have a look at that and then halve it. There's your 45, okay? Have you got 45 in front of you? Yeah? Okay, now that side that's opposite you, yeah, there's a side that you're looking at, it's opposite you, it's 7 centimeters. Right? So just visualize, well actually you can make a 7 centimeter thing, it's quite small. Okay. And here's what happens. You want to make that 7 centimeters wider, what you would do is naturally you would widen your arms, wouldn't you? Does that make sense? And that means as this angle gets bigger, necessarily the side joining your fingers, right, is going to get longer. Does that make sense? Okay, you can put your arms down there. <laughs> angle gets bigger, side gets longer. Okay. Now have a look at this. Do you see, if I had gotten 6.57, I'd know we were wrong. It's in the right ballpark. It's like, yeah, it looks like it could exist on this triangle. But it can't be 6.57 because see the angle? It's wider, right? So that means it necessarily makes a longer sign. That's why 8.57 doesn't just like look about the right ballpark. 
it actually makes sense. Is that okay? Now, here's my new triangle. Except, you should recognize this triangle, right? What triangle is that? It's this one, right? With a crucial difference that we're about to discover. Okay. So here, I've got a different unknown, right? So I'm going to look at that and I can say, oh, I know I can use the sign rule here because if you have a look at the features that you're given, again, you do it just like you did before. You start with the unknown. You notice, okay, the unknown is this angle. Oh, I chose a bad color, sorry. The unknown is an angle. I can see the opposite side. And then you know this other angle here and you have its opposite side. Bingo, I can use the sign rule. Okay, so let's have a go at it. When you start to um, write out the sine rule like this, because it's got the angle on the top, we're going to write sine theta on what? The opposite side. When I do fractions on fractions, I always put the one of the fractions or both in brackets so I don't confuse what's what. That's equal to... So far, so good. This looks familiar. We were just working with this, right? I'm going to multiply across, right? This guy's going to turn up on the numerator. I already know what sine 45 is. Have a look. How many things are going to cancel out? One. Lots of things, right? Sevens? Sevens, do you agree? They're gone, right? What about this uh, root 6 on root 2? You recognize that, don't you? That's going to give you, it looks to me like, root 3 on 2. Agree? Okay. Now, at this point, this is an exact value. Even if you don't recognize the exact value, you can reach for your calculator. And if you press sine inverse of root 3 on 2 onto your calculator, can anyone tell me? Does anyone remember well enough? It should hand to you 60 degrees. Now, hold on a second. What, what just happened? We just worked on this triangle and we knew what the size of the angle was. We said it was 120. But going from this opposite direction, we got something different. The question is, why? Anyone want to volunteer a suggestion? There's lots of different ways you can explain it. Eric. Because the length of the lot on the highlight. Yeah, no, that's cool. Does anyone want to offer a, a different thought on what's going on, Jay? Um, there may be more values to sign theta that equals to Okay, let me say that again in case you didn't quite catch it because it's really the crucial point. When you look at this guy, see that line there, right? Just forget about everything else on the board and imagine that line, right? If I asked you to solve that equation, we've been doing this since like last week, right? You'd solve that equation. You'd say, okay, um, ASTC, it's positive. So which quadrants am I in? One and two. One and two. And of course, you expect two solutions. Whenever you get something like this, you've almost certainly been getting two solutions. And then you say there's a first quadrant solution and there's a second quadrant solution. And you expect, well, you can have two. Here's why. Remember, maybe just draw a quick and dirty one on the side here. Remember what sign looks like. Here's the graph. You're getting familiar with this shape now, right? There's the sine x graph. Uh, root 3 is about 1.7. Root 3 on 2 is about 0 0.8, 0 0.866, I think. So if I draw that, that's 1. Let's just imagine that's root 3 on 2. Okay? And you can see the two solutions. 1, 2. Okay? So in this case, we have ambiguity. Theta actually could be 60. Right? You can, right? Do you remember that super card sense check that I told you before? How I said, oh, you've got a longer, uh, wider angle here. That gives you a longer side. Does it still work over here? Could I put 60 in here and make a triangle that makes sense? You can. You totally can, right? Look, you've got this angle matches to this side. You've got a bigger angle that matches to a bigger side. 60 is still bigger than 45. Do you agree? So. 60 degrees is not the only answer though, you can say, or 120. Does it still make sense? Well, it had better because that's what we had before. Okay? So either of these two are plausible and this is what we call the ambiguous case. Okay? Now, 
I'm really just start to work with it, but I want to point out what I said before. Uh, remember I said, oh, does it make sense? Okay, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. For instance, don't write this down because it would be wrong. But suppose down here I didn't get 60 or 120. Suppose I got, I'm just thinking of the numbers. Suppose I got 10 degrees or 170 degrees. That's a first quadrant angle and a second quadrant angle, both of the solutions, right? Except I know actually one of these solutions is a dud. Which one's the dud? This one here, even though it gives me a legitimate solution from whatever tree equation I had, right? you try and put this in the triangle and you're in a little bit of trouble, right? Because you've already got a 45 degree angle, you try and stick the 170 in there and suddenly you've got two angles adding up to 215 degrees. And I don't know what that shape that is, but it's not a triangle because it's not going to fit in your angle sum. Okay? There's one other thing you can do, which is have a look. Sometimes it's this guy that's the dot, right? In this case, if you've got a smaller angle over here, it has to match up with a smaller side. Right? This is why I didn't ask you to write it down, by the way, because this wouldn't happen. You have different lengths here. But you've got to look carefully at the angles you get and not just say, eh, I've got two angles. Could be either. You've got to go back to your triangle. Remember, actually, I'm not just solving this in isolation. I'm solving this in relation to this guy. Do the answers make sense? Sometimes both do. Sometimes only one. So you have to look carefully. Okay?